How you doing everyone, it's Jordan here with today's review of Toem. Now, Toem is a really cute little indie game that really caught my eye during a Nintendo indie presentation. Not my usual type of review, but I, re I was really intrigued by it and I want to tell you about it. So, let's jump in and see what it's all about. Toem is a cute little game. It's a game about taking pictures and solving people's problems. In this world of segmented dioramas, your dude travels from place to place, whether a forest, a seaside town, or a snowy mountain. You'll meet a vast array of quirky people with equally quirky problems. Plenty of wildlife, and you and your camera are there to take it all in and help people out with your photographic skills. One example is a kid wanting to see where some ingredients are. Another is that of a hotel proprietor needing a nice picture for marketing purposes. You can't just go anywhere you want though. Each area you land in, you'll require a certain amount of stamps in order to progress to the next place, usually around half of the available stamps in that area. You'll get stamps every time you help someone or complete a task. Not only is this a charming game, but it also makes you feel really good. It's so chilled, it is almost painful. You feel happy about helping people. You feel happy just plodding around, seeing cute new animals to take photos of, and maybe even preempt things that people will ask you to take a photo of. For example, I just looked up one time and I saw the moon. I thought, hmm, that looks nice. Maybe somebody will ask me to take a picture of the moon. What do you know? They did. Although they don't just say, take a picture of the moon, they'd give you a nice cryptic clue for it. While photography is obviously the gameplay gimmick, this is not really a photography game. It's more of a puzzle adventure game. You solve the challenges by taking photos rather than being judged on the quality of your composition. In fact, your pictures can be totally rubbish, but as long as you grab the thing someone wants in the frame, it's all grand and you get your stamp. I think that is a slight disappointment. While the simplicity has its advantages, it would be nice to be rewarded for some effort to, you know, make the photos as nice as possible. Even if it was just like a side thing and not like a hurdle to your progression. I mean, you know, I like to take a bit of pride in my work. Well, not that you'd know that if you watch my videos. But in real life, I do, I promise. There is no danger of failing this game. You're free to do it as fast or as relaxed as you please. There's no lives, no energy bar, there's no enemies. Okay, that is kind of a lie because there is one true enemy in this game. The god damn chairs. You will never despise chairs or benches more than you will here in Toem. Why? Well, because you have to talk to a lot of people. A lot of people who just happen to be around chairs. And boy, there is no greater challenge in gaming history than talking to that person on the first try. Your ass is getting planted on that bench next to them rather than starting a conversation in some sort of like Cold War spy situation. This is the Dark Souls of starting a conversation. Obviously, there may be a slight bit of exaggeration in that if you know me, but it is kind of annoying and constant as well. There have been a couple of patches since I completed the game like two weeks ago, so I'm not sure if they nerfed the benches or not. Hopefully that was high on their priority list rather than the, you know, the broken in-game achievements. Get your priorities right. Chairs aside, of all the quests the game has, I enjoyed the fact that many can be a little obscure. Some are super obvious, but there were a handful of them where I literally had to put down the controller and have a quick think about what the challenge could mean. And a few of them could be a little tough to find, even when you knew what you wanted. It is a really laid back game, very breezy if you just want to see the end credits, but if you want to do absolutely everything, you are going to have to use your brain once in a while, god forbid. Toem is a lovely little game. I just wish there was more of it. They say you should always leave an audience wanting more, but Toem just didn't give me that extra hour or two that I really think it needed. It took me four hours and 10 minutes for me to see the credits, and that was doing things as thoroughly as I had the patience for at that point. Going back into the game to 100% it took an extra 20 minutes, so really four and a half hours there or thereabouts, you know? Most artistic style indie games would gravitate to that length, but I feel it needed a bit more here. And that is a testament to how much I enjoyed it. Now, the developers said that 100%ing the game would take about seven hours, but they included doing the in-game achievements for that, which I didn't really feel like they were part of the experience at all. It didn't help that after I completed the game and loaded up my save, all the achievements disappeared. Uh, and since there was like no pop-ups whenever I achieved like an achievement, yeah, uh, there was no way of knowing how many I had done up to that point. 
Uh, but I was looking through them afterwards and I don't feel like there was anything too strenuous that I hadn't done already or wasn't close to doing. So yeah, I would take that seven hours with a pinch of salt. I love the black and white visuals here. I was a fan of them in Pato Box. I mean, I couldn't stomach them in every game, but it really works well here and probably does a better job than if it was in color. And surprisingly, you still get a feel for the different environments. You can still feel the green of the forest. You can feel the gray of the cityscape, even when it's all just white. And it has a Paper Mario feel to it that, you know, helps the cuteness. It feels somewhat homely. I think it is a good looking game despite the simplicity. The sound here can be a little minimalistic at times. There can be large periods of silence, at least that's what I felt, probably because you'll randomly pick up cassette tapes with some awesome songs on it from a couple of artists and you can play them freely from the menu, but for some reason they don't stick around. It would have been nice to have them like on the whole time, maybe in a loop as they were so good. And maybe there is a way to do that, I just didn't see it. Now this is currently a digital only game release, it's a $20 at full price on the US eShop, £16.19 in the UK and €18, Euros, but there is a 10% discount for a few days after release. I just really wish it was a tad cheaper, just a tad. $20 for 4 hours is off putting for a lot of people. And I would have hoped 20% less than that from the off would have brought in more people. I think there could have been a couple more areas to explore or at least more end game stuff here. Maybe have like a gallery that you fill in because you do take a lot of pictures and not all of them are useful for the quest. So you have a lot of pictures that are like useless and it would be nice to do something with them, you know? feel like you're rewarded for taking nice pictures, just do something with them. As I said, there's no physical version, but I would be shocked, shocked, I tell you, if someone didn't come in and snap this up. I mean, this has I am 8-bit written all over it. I mean, I can, I can almost smell them, yeah? They smell like beef stew. It's artsy, it's peculiar, it's right up their alley. You look at their portfolio and it screams I am 8-bit. Overall, look, I really love playing Toem, I booted the game up, I sat on the sofa and didn't get my arse off it until the credits rolled. That does not happen often. Sure, it's a fairly short game and I wish it was longer, but if you're looking for a compact, charmed filled game, then this will be a little indie delight for adventure game fans. It's probably going to be over too soon for most people and the lack of an end game hurt it a little for me. But you know, the devs have got to get the game out at some point. It's lovely to look at and nice to listen to, well, whenever the music decides to play, and it has a pleasing gameplay style that you can really chill out to and enjoy. Although be wary of those goddamn chairs. An 8 out of 10. Alright, thanks for watching. Please check out some of our other reviews, Ultra Age from last week, and depending on when you're watching this, maybe a review of Cruising Blast. That's coming out on Tuesday, if Tuesday has come and gone already. I have no idea. I'm speaking from the past right now. This is not present, Jordan. This is two weeks ago, Jordan. For all I know, I might be dead in two weeks. Did the aliens come yet? Anyways, rambling. Big shout out to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boom Box, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, J Cruz 7776, Elissa, Punky Dusta, Michael Del Polito, Cartoon Soren, Jack Severus, Vilos, Robotech, and Z. Thank you for your amazing, fantastic support. Plus you, yes, you watching right now. The longer you watch, the more of a legend you are because you are the ones who help us grow. In honor of Toem, leave me a camera emoji in the comments and I'll give you one back. I just want to see who the legends are out there. Here are some of our other stuff. You should watch it because then you'll be extra super legendary or something. Okay, have a good one.